This fish changes its appearance constantly throughout its life history and it also has a ton of names. Hi, what's going on everybody? My name is Brandon. I'm a marine biologist and an artist and welcome to Nature Meets Paper, the place where we go on an adventure to discover the world of marine biology. I love sharing my experiences with aquatic creatures with you through art. If you are new, welcome. Nature Meets Paper is a place where we learn about aquatic animals through science, stories, and art. It's my goal to raise awareness of our beautiful bodies of water and the animals that live in them. Today we're going to be discovering the red chorus wrasse or the yellow tail chorus wrasse. Are you ready? Let's dive in. The chorus gaimard is one tough fish to identify. It has roughly five common names. It is most commonly called the yellowtail chorus, red chorus, and clown chorus wrasse. I will call it the yellowtail chorus wrasse, or yellowtail. It also has a ton of physical variants and stages. It is found in the central Indo-Pacific Ocean. It likes coral, sand, rocky shores, and coastal habitat from East Indian Ocean, north coast of Australia, Japan, and to Hawaii. Yellowtail chorus can be found from 3 to 50 meters deep. What are we looking for when identifying the yellowtail chorus? This is a tricky question to answer. There are four or five physical variants to the yellowtail chorus wrasse. It doesn't help that they are called different names depending on the region or person that you talk to. Yellowtail chorus are wrasse. This helps us a bit. We know that wrasse is a spindle-shaped fish. This means they are great at cruising through the coral. They have soft rays with a few spines running along the dorsal and ventral surfaces. They have soft rounded caudal fins or tail fins. They have fleshy lips and sharp canine teeth. I will need to go over the differences between juveniles, females, and males separately. When they are juveniles, the yellowfin chorus does not have a yellow tail. In fact, they are completely red with four or five white stripes along the sides. This gives them the name the clown chorus. They look like a relative to the clownfish. It is believed that they do this to avoid predation and harassment from large territorial males. Here is where the fish gets weird. All you know right now is that the fish is red with white stripes. Right. Once it reaches 4 centimeters in length, it starts to mature into a young female. They are bright red and grow into their yellow tail. Brilliant blue dots start appearing from the tail forward. The face also changes as it gets crazy lines of green or yellow radiating from the nose. At this point, the white stripes are completely gone. As the adult female grows, it turns green with a pink striped face. There are many more brilliant blue dots along the side of the fish. These dots look like they are backlit with LED lights. They are crazy bright. It almost looks fake. The tail is completely yellow by this point. This fish went from a juvenile red female to a green spotted female. Are you wondering about the males? I have only touched on the females so far. That is because there are no male juveniles or young adults. When they grow to a certain size, then they become males. Yellowtail chorus wrasse grow to a maximum of 40 centimeters long, but usually stay around 20. Males become territorial and don't like being with other males. Their body turns black and a yellow stripe becomes visible on the side of the fish. By this point, the entire side of the fish is covered in bright blue dots. The yellow tail ends in a bright orange stripe and the fish looks completely different once again. Can you see why I was having trouble finding any information on this fish? I thought all of these other fish were different species. Let's discover what the yellowtail wrasse eats and how it is doing. 
we know wrasses are omnivores. They eat crabs, mollusks, brittle stars, and urchins. Occasionally, a large male will eat other small fish. They use their sharp teeth to grab their prey and use pharyngeal teeth to crush it. So how are they doing? They are listed as least concerned by the IUCN Red List. There is no decline in population currently. There is some habitat loss and this fish is used in the aquarium trade, but other than that, this fish is doing fine. Now is the segment where I get to share my personal experience with this wrasse. I was at the Maui Ocean Center. They get in fresh fish constantly. It makes going to the same aquarium interesting every time you go. This fish was in the same exhibit as the surge wrasse, which I covered in my previous video. I like wrasse. They are typically brightly colored and demand attention. Well, maybe I just like fish. I also like the slow, hiding, and sometimes ugly fish. Well, anyways, this brightly colored fish was swimming in its encounter and I wanted to show you. At the same time, I didn't know what kind of fish it was. It happens quite often. People think I know all these fish off the top of my head, but I typically need a field guide or other reference material to identify the fish. If it were a marine mammal that I have worked with and studied or was in an area that I've worked in, I would know that but just by looking at it. That's because I have experience. Sometimes fish are harder. This fish was swimming back and forth. They are active fish that tuck between the coral and swim quickly. I saw a fish I liked, took a picture, and figured out what it was, researched it, and I'm presenting it to you. Maybe it will become your favorite fish. I didn't spend too much time with this fish, but I still liked my encounter. With that, I will call this adventure finished. Thanks for watching this video. If you think that I deserve it, click subscribe and ring the notification bell. This way you can be notified when I post new content. I do my best to post new content every single weekend, but sometimes life gets in the way or painting is too detailed to finish in a week. If you want to support this channel to make sure that I can continue making content for you, you can buy my art. You can buy the art in the original forms as well as museum quality prints. My originals sell for $12 a linear inch. My prints run $6 and $3 a linear inch for a limited edition and unlimited edition. If art's not your thing, I sell merchandise at teespring.com. Links are down below. If you don't want to do any of those things, I also have a Patreon page. I need to be better at posting on there. But what you can do is you can pay for videos, for longer videos, uh, more in depth, maybe some of sometimes art related. Um, for that content to support this channel. Anyways, thank you so much. I've been Brandon, and I'll see you in our next adventure.